video is one of the many tools in the Wavelength Tech Support Toolbox to help you understand the PTC series of temperature controllers and how to quickly set one up for your application. The PTC temperature controller circuitry exists in PCB mount or chassis mount models up to 10 amps. The electronics are identical in both. PCB mount with SIP pins, heat sink, and a fan. An evaluation board is available to simplify testing. And chassis mount, which allows you to deliver the heat sink and airflow solutions ideal for your application. It is the most compact package and connects via cables. These precision temperature controllers can be used with any temperature sensor that produces a voltage between 0.25 and 5 volts. The most common are thermistors, RTDs, and IC sensors such as the LM335 or AD590. They are PI controllers that compare the set point voltage to the sensor voltage, driving output current to the thermoelectric or resistive heater to heat or cool the load that the sensor is attached to. The high stability of these controllers enables researchers to precisely monitor trace gases in fracking, biosamples in life sciences, and semiconductor performance. Tight control enables applications in electro-optics, imaging, spectroscopy, remote sensing, military, aerospace, communications, material processing, and environmental or manufacturing control. Compact size makes them ideal for field-deployed systems. Single supply operation from 5 to 30 volts is possible up to 10 amps, if the load configuration meets the safe operating area criteria. At 5 volts in, the maximum sensor signal can be 3.5 volts. To increase sensor range up to 5.5 volts, use a minimum of 7 volts in. One power supply feeds both the control electronics and the output drive current. For minimum internal heat dissipation, keep the power supply voltage just above the voltage you want delivered to the thermoelectric or resistive heater. Please note that these are electrostatic sensitive devices and standard ESD safe handling protocols should be used. See our application note on ESD safety. We're going to set up a PTC 10KCH to operate using a 10K ohm thermistor and a thermoelectric. Before wiring anything, we need to make sure the combination of power supply voltage, output current, and load requirements will not drop too much power across the PTC temperature controller. This cannot exceed 60 watts for the chassis mount version and 110 watts for the PCB mount version. A safe operating area calculator is available online. You may also see our video on YouTube that details how to use the SOA calculator. Once a safe power supply voltage has been chosen, we'll set up with a power supply, a test load, a small Phillips screwdriver, three multimeters, and an oscilloscope. The set point voltage can be generated by the PTC using the onboard potentiometer or by a remote voltage. Before wiring up the PTC, two internal jumpers need to be set properly. Remove the cover, two corner screws, and locate the jumpers. One set is for sensor and bias current selection. The other determines if the output enable signal and set point are generated internally or expected to be provided externally. To set up for a thermistor, we want the sensor jumper to be in the other position. Then we choose the bias current that will produce a feedback voltage in the optimal operating range. For example, if our operating temperature will be 16 degrees C, the 10K ohm thermistor will be 15,000 ohms. Using Ohm's law, a 100 microamp bias current would produce 1.5 volts. Set the jumper to 100 microamps. We want to use the onboard set point trim pot, so make sure the set point jumper is on IVS, internal voltage set point. We'll also choose to have the output always enabled, so the enable jumper needs to be set to IEN, internal enable. To use an external set point voltage, the jumper would go to EVS and a voltage is expected at pin 6 of J3. When the jumper is in the EVS position, the onboard set point trim pot setting is ignored. If you do not want the output current always enabled, set the jumper to EEN and provide a control signal to pin 1 of J3. To enable, use a signal greater than 3.4 volts. We'll use a sensor test load across sensor plus and sensor minus. Connect the thermoelectric and an ammeter in series to tech plus and tech minus on TB1. We've made sure the ammeter is rated for up to 3 amps. 
To minimize noise, keep all cables short and twist the power supply and thermoelectric cables. Shielded monitor cables are included with the chassis mount. Twisted power supply and load cables are also available. For our example, we will operate at 5 volts. Connect the power supply to V plus and ground on terminal strip TB1. Make sure the module is attached to a heat sink using thermal paste and airflow across the fins. The multi heat sink high and thermal paste accessories are available to simplify setup. Now we need to determine the maximum current we want delivered to the thermoelectric and set the PTC limit. From the thermoelectric data sheet, find the absolute maximum current. The limit needs to be set below this value. For our application, we're using a 3 amp thermoelectric. We can either look at the chart in the PTC data sheet that says 3.3 amp limit is around tick 4 and set it roughly that way, or hook up a voltmeter to the limit monitor and ground and specifically set it using the limit monitor transfer function. We do need power on at the unit to do it that precisely. Now we can rotate the limit current trim pot until the voltmeter reads 0.3 volts. Set up another voltmeter to monitor the set point across pins 4 and 5 of J3. The 10K ohm of the resistor times the 100 microamp bias current will produce a 1 volt signal at the sensor input. Rotate the set point trim pot so it goes above 1 volt. Now rotate the set point trim pot so the voltage is below 1 volt. The current direction changes. The sign on the current changes. Now you know the controller can drive current in both directions. You can turn off the power supply now and replace the cover. Install the sensor cable to J1. It is important that the sensor be close to the thermoelectric and have a good thermal bond. The thermoelectric needs to be attached to a heat sink to remove the waste heat generated. Again, a good thermal bond is required. We use either thermal paste or a thermal washer and screw the parts together to make sure th surface roughness doesn't create air gaps and restrict the heat transfer. For this demonstration, we'll keep the ammeter in series with the thermoelectric. We'll install another voltmeter on the actual temperature monitor, across pins 2 and 3 of J3, as well as an oscilloscope. Set the oscope to 500 millivolts per division with a 10 second sweep time. We will use the default proportional gain of 14. For our example, we want to operate our load at 16 degrees C, so the set point voltage needs to be 1.5 volts. Turn on power again and rotate the set point trim pot until the set point monitor shows that voltage. Since we have the unit constantly enabled, the output current started to flow with the previously set 1 volt set point. Actual temperature, shown as the thermistor voltage, started near room temperature, for us about 20 degrees C and 1.25 volts. It moved toward 1.25 volts, then toward our new set point of 1.5 volts. If I put some free spray on the sensor, we can watch the temperature drop. A thermistor is a negative temperature coefficient sensor, so resistance and voltage go up when temperature drops. You can see the PTC controller respond to the lower temperature by driving more current through the thermoelectric to return the sensor to the set point. If we use a heat gun on the sensor, the temperature increases and the thermoelectric current changes value to bring the sensor temperature back to set point. That's it. You're up and running a temperature controlled system with the PTC 10KCH temperature controller. You can vary the proportional gain to optimize time to temperature or control overshoot. App note TNTC01, Optimizing Temperature Control Systems, gives insight into how to best tune the system. The PTCs are designed to be very flexible. For example, two can be set up in master booster configuration to drive up to 20 amps. Make sure that the power supply connections are starred. This means separate power lines are run to each controller. Daisy chaining power supply inputs causes ground loops and voltage drops. This applies to all products. If you're using an external set point, the PTC has an extra fail safe default circuit to make the set point 1 volt if the external set point signal is lost. That way, the system doesn't drive the load to extreme high or low temperatures. The default trigger point is 0.312 volts. Both the trigger point and the safety set point can be changed. More information on adaptations is available in the additional technical information section of the datasheet. 
We also offer product variations to optimize the hardware for your specific needs, such as replacing trim pots with fixed value resistors, modifying the proportional gain range, changing the integrator time constant, limiting the set point range, or reducing the cost by eliminating covers and cables. One of the fun products we've developed provides remote computer control of the PTC. The USB kit comes with Quick Connect software that allows remote control of one temperature controller and one laser diode driver. If you need precise, safe, robust temperature control, the adaptable PTC series offers many advantages. <laughs> Bow, 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 bow,